pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Carol, could you please take the roll? Ms. Auglis? Here. Mr. Buffard? Here. Mr. DuPont? Here. Mr. Fellows? Here. Mr. Mazur? Here. Mr. McGee? Here. Mr. Paul? Thank you, and uh, please let the record show that in the absence of Mr. Paul, uh, Mr. McGee, our first alternate, will be a voting member tonight. The next item is approval of minutes from the June 23rd, 2014 meeting. So moved. There's a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Should that be unanimous. Thank you. Item number four, the planning board will conduct a public hearing to receive input regarding proposed amendments to the Running Hill Districts, RH and RH2, and the conservation design standards for the Gorham Road area. I should say that this item and the next item, number five, are, are sort of companion pieces. The next item, number five, has to do with the, uh, the zoning map, proposed zoning map modifications associated with the proposed revisions in number four. So item number five, the planning board will conduct a public hearing to receive input regarding the proposed amendments to the Scarborough zoning map for the Gorham Road area. And as we customarily do in these cases, uh, we'll have staff, planning staff, uh, give the presentation for both of those items since they are companion pieces. And we will have two, we'll open and close two separate uh, public hearing periods, and then we'll have board discussion on the items uh, as a pair. So with that, uh, Mr. Jace. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so yeah, as you just mentioned, uh, we'll be addressing the two items together as they do go hand in hand. Um, this is a zoning package uh, that has been worked on and recommended by the Long Range Planning Committee, which is an outgrowth of the town's Comprehensive Plan Implementation Committee. Uh, this is really one of the last remaining areas to be updated, uh, at least in the growth zone, as recommended by the Comprehensive Plan. Um, which in and of itself is a feat, um, given the work that's gone into, uh, into the rezoning in these areas. And as you can see, the area in question is uh, just to the west of the turnpike uh, up Gorham Road. Um, it incorporates land on the, I'll call it the north side of Gorham Road, and a larger portion on the no south side, uh, principally the Nunsuch River Golf Course. Uh, this area is really a transition area, which isn't under significant pressure for development right now, but again, the comprehensive plan really envisions a different future than what the current zoning allows, and, and I'll talk about that in here in just a moment. Um, so it's an area that's close to the highway, as I mentioned, and it's, it begins to transition uh, from the, the more uh, regional commercial growth along Payne Road into uh, our rural and farming district, our lower density, our lowest density zoning. And at the moment, there's sort of a, the transition is, is defined by smaller development, not necessarily what might be enabled by the existing zoning. Um, and so in looking at that, the, the comprehensive plan really recommends, as I mentioned, the area to become that transition um, and, and more of a gateway to the rural uh, part of the community. Um, so the goals for the area uh, are also to enable a, a broader mix of uses. As I mentioned, the current zoning is principally a commercial zoning. This would allow for a greater mix of activities um, as a reference there. Again, as I sort of referenced before, here's the current zoning for the area where you can see the B2 zone. That's that larger commercial district that allows, allows large uh, big box type retailers, drive through restaurants uh, on the west side of the turnpike directly abutting the RF zone. Um, so in looking at this, the comprehensive, the Long Range Planning Committee recognized that you know the existing zoning didn't sort of match up with the goals of the comprehensive plan. And uh, after a lot of committee deliberation and a number of, or at least one neighborhood meeting and, and consultations with uh, the abutting property owners or the affected property owners as well, I should say, 
Uh, the Long Range Planning Committee is recommending the use of the Running Hill Mixed Use Zoning Districts, which are zoning districts that were utilized uh, and probably implemented in the order of three or four years ago along Running Hill Road, sort of in the transition zone, uh, again, along Running Hill Road from sort of the South Portland uh, boundary where, where uh, uh, Target and the Anthem Building are leading up uh, Running Hill Road towards back towards Gorham Road. So, um, and then the other component to the zoning is there's a proposed RF redistricting on the south side of the Nunsuch River. Uh, there's a number of uh, natural constraints in this area along Holmes Road as well as the Nunsuch River proper um, that the committee felt that would probably be best used for less intensive uh, residential development given those natural uh, constraints in the area. Um, so, as I just sort of showed the remapping, as, I, as was mentioned and as the first public hearing is about, is really about the zoning language itself. Um, the RH districts are a, really are a mixed use zone. They allow a lighter commercial uh, style development, um, do allow offices and smaller retail businesses, but not the larger retail and the drive through restaurants as referenced before. Also allows residential development mixed in with commercial as well as multifamily and senior housing. Um, the committee worked in looking at the existing RH, Running Hill, and Running Hill 2 uh, districts. Uh, the committee sort of looked at the existing zoning and proposed some amendments to make them fit the, the, this location as well um, with specific setbacks and buffers to RF properties allow, as, long, as well as uh, allowances for existing businesses and uses. Um, so. Um, Final sort of note on it as well is one of the item. The other item that the committee touched on was amendments to the conservation subdivision design, which is uh, predominantly the type of subdivisions that this board has been reviewing for the last number of years, particularly in the RF zone, in the R2 zones, uh, which allow for sort of a uh, uh, more compact zoning in the RF areas. But one of the requirements is that 50% of this uh, land remain as open space. And so the requirement, or this would now open up that requirement to allow for that open space to be, include uh, golf courses, um, thereby enabling potentially uh, additional residential development along uh, in the Nunsuch non golf course area, as well as others if desired. Um, so that's sort of the overview. As I mentioned, there was a neighborhood meeting uh, back in April, and I know we have at least two members of the Long Range Planning Committee serving on this board as well. So um, that is the essence of my overview. I think I'll leave this map up at this point and turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Jay. <clears throat> With that, uh, I will open a public hearing to receive input regarding proposed amendments <coughs> to the Running Hill Districts, RH and RH2, and the conservation design standards for the Gorham Road area. I'll just quickly note that uh, per standard uh, planning, planning board uh, policy, we ask you to keep your comments to five minutes or less and try not to repeat anything that's already been stated. Do we have anyone? Going once, <laughs> going twice. We'll close that public hearing and I will open a public hearing to receive input regarding the proposed amendments to the Scarborough zoning map for the Gorham Road area. You do that very well. Thanks. All right, that outcome doesn't surprise me. One more chance, all right. And we will close the public hearing. And uh, we'll uh, begin board discussion now and we'll start with Ms. Oglis, if that's all right with you. Well. <coughs> I'm prejudiced about this. I'll go right up front because I'm a member of the Long Range Planning Committee. And this particular proposal took us quite a long time because it is a complex piece of property. In other words, it's got a golf course on it now, so it's pretty much being used as open space. Um, we've got the river that runs through the lower part of it, but yet it also borders on a uh, home. Um, <coughs> it does. It is Holmes Road. Yeah. Yeah, and the one up above is Gorham. Thank right. you. I'm getting old. Gorham Road. 
and how do we make all of that come together and do it in a way that included the neighbors in the process, because that's something that the Long Range Planning Committee has a, a, a strong commitment to. So this, I think, is a, a really nice um, fit. I would like to, if you haven't already looked at it, uh, ask you to look at page three of the overview of the Gorham Road zoning proposal, because it's the conservation subdivision provisions. And the amendments that are, would be passed if this is passed by the um, council will allow the use of golf courses, cross-country ski facilities, and other outdoor commercial recreation areas to be used as the open space for the conservation subdivision, as long as, uh, this is the part that's so important, as long as the open space is permanently restricted from future development. These provisions have been added because the existing golf course could accommodate some residential development scattered along the edge of the fairways, which we all know happens fairly frequently in successful golf courses, but it will enable the long-term preservation of the portions of the course and its buffer to the Nunsash River. So uh, there were people who were concerned. I got a couple of calls from people who were concerned that if we do this, we're going to lose the open space that we expect from the golf course. All they have to do is sell off that land, and it's gone. Well, it won't be. So anyway, that's all I have to say tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. McGee? I have no comments. All right. Mr. Buffard? Uh, I have a question for staff uh, for Jerry. When the golf course was expanded uh, and Lauren Drive was created, weren't there lots created along that, which which is shown on the map here, small lots that with the intention of developing those with small businesses? I don't know that I can speak to the development of, of uh, was it, Lauren Drive. Yes. Uh, there certainly are lots shown on the tax map, but I wasn't around during that time, and I haven't. Anyone else? Yeah. Carol's body. If my memory is correct, mm -hmm. uh, that was the intention of those lots. Yeah. I'm just wondering what what the status is now, and what will be the zone change. Well, if those lots, as as we just referenced, appear to be. In this is our tax map, so are in existence. Uh, they had been B2 zoned, so they could have been commercially developed up till now. And with the RH district, they could, again, be commercially developed potentially. Uh, of course, they need to come through site plan review or what have you. But uh, if those are existing subdivision lots, then they could be developed as such. OK. It's in spite of the zone change. Well, the, the R, the the bit about the conservation subdivision design that um, uh, uh, Ms. August was just speaking to only pertains to that portion of the golf cart course that's in the RF district. The conservation subdivision design standards do not pertain to the RH district. Um, so in other words, they would, those laws would be grandfathered? No. no. They're not, they, they will be able to have commercial development, but it will be, un, if this passes, it will be under the RH definition of commercial, not under the B2 definition of commercial. So it won't be grandfathered. It's just it didn't get developed under B2, so it's still a, a possible <coughs> to develop it, but it would be developed under <coughs> RH as opposed to so the B2. the requirements and restrictions would change. Would change, right, but they would still be developable. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all I had. I Yep. Thanks. Mr. DuPont? I'm okay with it. All right. Mr. Mazur? No, I'm fine. All right. Thanks. Um, I'm also on the Long Range Planning Committee, and so, like Ms. Augustus, I'm somewhat biased, but I support this as well. Um, I think we had no fewer than probably five or six meetings on this, maybe more. <laughs> um, and a lot of that was because we really wanted, well, we always want to try to get it right, but in, in this particular case, it's such a critical kind of pivot point for the town and its future growth. Um, and there are a variety of things going on there and a whole range from bottom to top, from the light industrial all the way up through the other uh, land use types. And of course, the golf course is there. Um, I'll echo what Ms. Alka said about the importance of the open space provision. That's a key one. Um, and you know, another consideration that, that was kind of overarched a lot of our discussions had to do with the, the key dynamic of 
sewer, city sewer versus non-city sewer, um, and as you get on the other side, on that side of the turnpike, um, we don't have town sewer, and, and we, in, in working through these provisions, we wanted to try and make sure that we kind of anticipated the types of development that might occur at some point, and likely will at some point, given the, the growth uh, patterns of the town. Um, and so there's language in there that sort of anticipates that and uh, tries to make sure that if and when those type, those development types do go forward, that um, it'll be done in a, in a sort of a rational, sustainable way. So um, with that, I think we can say that we're sending a very positive uh, recommendation on this. Is there anything else? Thank you. The next item, number six, is a consent item. Hospice of Southern Maine requests site plan review for a 12,112 square foot building for a site at Route 1 and Lincoln Avenue. Mr. Chase. Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. As you just know, this is a consent item. Thereby, that ostensibly means the board has gone through its thorough review of the item and only at their last meeting had a few outstanding items they want to see revised prior to potentially considering a formal motion on the item. The most pressing issue at the board's last uh, discussion was a proposed right turn access only uh, on Route 1 that um, the board found was not consistent with the town's zoning or design standards, and so they have modified that and they have full access off Lincoln Avenue, and they've enhanced their landscaping along the Route 1 corridor as well as at the Lincoln Ave access. Um, staff has prepared a draft motion with conditions for the board's consideration. Uh, those conditions include final architectural plans to be reviewed by staff, provided they're consistent with the renderings that have been demonstrated to this board before. I believe that is, is something the board had agreed to at their, your last meeting, and so that has been made a condition. There's also um, fire department just had a few uh, concerns about a fire lane on the north side of the building, so we're suggesting that the plans could be potentially revised and reviewed by staff to ensure fire lane conditions are met. Uh, we believe it's a fairly subtle change that um, won't ostensibly change the, the design and layout of the site. Uh, so with that, Mr. Chair, I turn it over to the board. Thank you. Uh, do we have a representative uh, from the applicant here? Is there anything that I'd uh, like to just give the opportunity? This is a consent item, uh, so we don't necessarily expect anything else, but just wanted to give you that opportunity. Sure. Uh, Dave Perkins, I'm a board member. Thank you for everything you've been doing to help us along with the project. But uh, it's been pretty much technical back and forth, so I don't have much to add. All right. Thanks. Uh, does anyone on the board have anything on this? Yeah. Any final Dave, questions? Dave, I just comments? have one question sure. for you. Are they going to put a plaque up? Are they referring to the historic site? Yes. Uh, there were folks here last time, and we said we're we'll glad to work with you. And we also said if you want, they're talking about a um, an arch and a fountain. You know, and that's not what I'm referring to. But they, there was also a mention of maybe just a plaque that would give yeah, recognition. We said we, we said we would come back to us. We'll work. With, we'd love to have a plaque, but we didn't. They didn't have anything uh, specific in mind. So I think it's going to be talked about in the future. But we're all for it. We don't want to spend a lot of money, but we'll work with them. Thank you. And if you'd like to spend money, we'll do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. So. Anyone else? Susan. Uh, just briefly, my concern was the um, landscaping because I didn't have one of these full-sized to look at. And in the meantime, when I got this and looked at it more closely, I realized that the landscaping, which is really very nice, is, all, is also all deciduous. And so I called the um, staff and suggested that if, if the applicant was willing, maybe there could be something put in here that would be non-deciduous. I'm happy to say that the um, uh, landscaping plan that was submitted for this particular meeting does show, I don't know, I can't even figure out what they are right now. <laughs> but anyway, they're pines. Do you remember what kind of pines? You don't know. I wouldn't know. No. Anyway, white spruce, excuse me, white spruce. We're going to have uh, 15 of them across the, across the front, right near Route 1. So it makes me feel a little a little better about 
where the building sits and the landscaping and all of that. So that, that will be added and changed to the proposal. Okay. Thanks. Anyone else? One quick, sure. very technical, nothing too important except for their sign. Um, is this the sign that we should expect to see? I, the only reason I ask is yeah. it says eight feet wide by two feet high, and that looks bigger than two feet high. That's the existing sign down at, uh, so I think they just use it to show the logo. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know exactly what this, uh, I mean, the approval says we have to meet the sign ordinance and do some sign things, but I believe that's the existing sign on Route 1. Okay. Yeah. And I think they put it in the package to show you what, it's gonna, what our signage looks okay. like. So the height is just a typo. Okay. One of the conditions that staff put in for your consideration is that the final design of the freestanding sign be reviewed and approved by planning staff, so we'll be <coughs> sure that it's compliant with zoning requirements, uh, presuming it, it ostensibly looks as what's being demonstrated to the board at this meeting. Okay. Thank you. That was okay. all I had. Thanks. And that has been a fairly standard practice in the past, and I, I think it's accurate to say that if the applicant were to come back with something that was completely unexpected or... <laughs> Uh, beyond the pale that there'd be further discussion and, and the board would be brought in as necessary, but it's typically not. So, anything else? I'm all set. Okay. Thank you. Uh, well, I <coughs> like the way this looks as well. I appreciate the, um, the most recent changes, including the, uh, the elimination of the, the curb cut at, at route, on Route 1. I agree that the landscaping looks nice, uh, and I think we're we're ready to uh, vote on this. So with that, I will move that the planning board approve the application of Hospice of Southern Maine represented by FST under Chapter 405, the Zoning Ordinance, and Chapter 405B, Site Plan Review Ordinance, with the following findings and conditions. Findings. Hospice of Southern Maine proposes to develop property identified on the Town of Scarborough tax maps as map U38, Lot 2, and R62, Lot 29B. The site is approximately 7.79 acres with frontage along Route 1 and Leakin Avenue. The property is located within the B3 zoning district. The, development, the proposed development includes the construction of a 12,000 square foot approximate office building and associated infrastructure improvements. <coughs> the planning board has reviewed the application <coughs> and supporting documentation and finds that the proposed design of the site plan adequately addresses the site plan review ordinance and zoning ordinance requirements for site utilization and layout, access, internal vehicular movement, pedestrian ways, landscaping, stormwater management, architecture, signage, utilities, and storage. The conditions, number one. Prior to the issuance of a building permit, final architectural plan shall be reviewed and approved by planning staff. The planning staff is to find the final plans consistent with the plans presented to the board before final approval. Number two, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the site plan shall be revised to adequately address the fire lane requirements on the north side of the building. Revised plans to be reviewed and approved by planning staff. Number three, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall pay traffic impact fees. Number four, Prior to the issuance of the building permit, the applicant shall execute and record the maintenance agreement as required by the post-construction stormwater infrastructure management ordinance. And number five, the freestanding sign shall require a sign permit to be reviewed and issued by the code enforcement officer in consultation with the senior planner. That is a motion. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? All in favor. Thank you. I show it to be unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to seeing it. Appreciate it. I always like the ones where it takes longer to read the motion than to actually go over the proposal. <coughs> Item number seven, Rigney Farm Subdivision, Rosbera Brothers Construction, Inc. requests final subdivision plan review for a 13-lot residential subdivision off Highland Avenue in the R2 zone. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, let's see, this is an item that the board has reviewed on a couple of occasions, both as a sketch plan and uh, culminating in a preliminary review. I believe it was at your last meeting. Um, as you just referenced, this is for a 13-lot 
subdivision in ostensibly an R2 zone, but the overall lot does have some components that are also industrial zoned and RF zoned, um, and there is a aquifer protection overlay district in the area as well. Um, in concerning this item, uh, the applicant has requested uh, a waiver of the road width to 20 feet, which uh, the board has granted at, at, with preliminary approval. Um, and let's see, with your submission, uh, you should have received a few staff comments as well as a memorandum from Woodard and Currents. I will note that we have received the uh, DEP stormwater permit. We do have that in hand. Um, at this point, there's a few uh, notations and technical merits to be uh, cleaned up, but ostensibly, uh, staff's fairly comfortable. If the board were to be comfortable, uh, we've drafted a motion with some conditions for board's consideration um, based on your discussion tonight. Thank you, Jay. And I'll turn it over to the applicant. Great, thank you. Uh, my name is Lee Allen with Northeast Civil Solutions. Um, just a couple of brief things that uh, um, Jay didn't touch on. Um, there's, there's a couple of minor notes that we're obviously going to be working through with staff. Um, for the record, the road name has been changed to Forecaster Way. Um, that's been cleared through E911. Um, a letter of authorization and kind of summary from what's going to happen with the neighbor that's off the, the newly formed private way, Banneger Way, Jackson's, has also been received by, by staff. Um, and as Jay mentioned, we've received our DEP permits, and, and with that, I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Start down here with Ron. Yeah, I got just one, Lee. Um, one of the recommendations that, that came out was on the berm that the silt fence go all the way around uh, the perimeter and uh, also the uh, vegetation that would be in it, in other words, the loam, the seed, the erosion control. Has that been addressed? I believe it has. I believe that was already approved and those comments were addressed. I think it's kind of a cycling back around, but that project was already approved with those changes. Okay. Those were, if you'll recall, this did have sort of a unique sort of stand-in, if you will, where uh, the board provided a approval for a land reclamation project so they could con begin work on the berm prior to final subdivision approval. And I believe the notes Woodard and Curran, our peer review staffers, uh, reviewed both plans. Um, and so I think they were just slightly outside the loop on <laughs> on a plan set because of the sort of de minimis nature of it all. So to, to your question, the sedimentation and erosion control berms will be adequately addressed. Okay, so that, that's where I get a little confused. Yep. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Thanks. John? Good. Thanks. Dave? I think I'm good. All right, Nick? I'm good. <coughs> Susan? I always love it when we get to this point. For all the work and all of it, did you hear and did you get, did you read? We're ready to just say, hey, I don't see any problems. Thank you. Likewise, I think I'm good at this point. And it is nice to be at this point. I don't think I have anything to add. Um, so I will uh, put a motion forward. The move to approve the application of Risbera Brothers Construction prepared by Northeast Civil Solutions, Inc under Chapter 406, the Town of Scarborough Subdivision Ordinance for the final subdivision plan of Rigney Farm with the following findings, waivers, and conditions. Findings. The applicant proposes a 13-lot residential subdivision on approximately 19.34 acres. The residential subdivision is located within the Residential 2 R2 District and has been designed in accordance with the Conservation Subdivision Design Standards as a conservation subdivision. The Planning Board finds that the subdivision meets the required conservation subdivision design standards with residential lots designed to meet the space and bulk regulations of Section 7A and with an excess of 50% open space principally designed to conserve wetlands, natural areas, and wildlife habitat. The Planning Board has reviewed the applicant's proposed plan and related materials as submitted and finds that the final subdivision plan meets the performance standards of Section 4 and 6 <coughs> of the Subdivision Ordinance with the following waivers and conditions. Waiver number one, 
permit the proposed subdivision road to be constructed at a width of 20 feet rather than the town standard 24 feet. Waiver number two. <clears throat> Due to the scope and nature of the subdivision, the board waived the requirement for sidewalks. Conditions, number one. The subdivision shall be constructed in accordance with the subdivision plan set titled Rigney Farm Subdivision as prepared by NCS revised June 27, 2014 to be further revised to address staff comments and to add a plan note referencing requirements for residential uses in the Aquifer Protection Overlay District. And condition number two. Prior to the release of the attested final subdivision plan to the applicant for recording at the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds, the applicant shall A, pay the required traffic impact fees, and B, execute and record all documentation necessary to comply with the town's post-construction stormwater infrastructure management ordinance. That is that motion. I think we need a second. First, do we have a second? Okay, we have a second discussion? Um, just a question. Now that it's no longer Rigney whatever road, do we want this to go in as the Rigney Farm subdivision plan? Because that's how it was originally given to us, right? The subdivision plan name itself is not changing. It's the, the it's just the road name. Okie dokie. That Thank was yeah, that's good clarification. So we still have a Seconded motion out there. Any further discussion? All in favor? Thanks. That's unanimous. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Item number seven. I'm sorry, that was number seven. We're going too fast here. Item number eight, Layton Farm Subdivision Phase 1, Layton Farm LLC, requests preliminary subdivision review for 23 single-family lots off Elmwood Avenue in the R2 zone. Jay? Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so, yeah, as board members will recall, this item has been before you uh, a couple of times for a sketch plan through the winter, and most recently at your meet last meeting as a preliminary review um, as a 99-lot subdivision. However, with our last review, uh, we identified a zoning compliance issue with the existing tower on site, and the applicant is now uh, proposing to scale back the project, uh, at least in the short term anyway, uh, to a 23, it's actually um, really a 24 lot subdivision because the 24th lot is the remaining land, which is tied into this subdivision, but it is ostensibly a new 23 lot subdivision. Um, anyway, um, ostensibly phase one is very similar to what the board had been reviewing all along. Um, the lot layout is the same. It's maybe some minor tweaks, but ostensibly the same tweaks in, in relation to uh, prior comments. Um, However, with the change to the 23 lots, one thing staff did identify with the initial submission was that we did need a new um, net residential determination. Um, and just by way of background, I know we've been through this before, but with this project being in the R2, it's required to go through a conservation subdivision design. As part of that process, an applicant needs to uh, do a net residential calculation to demonstrate how many lots the, the uh, the parcel of property could contain. Um, and the net residential calculation is a fairly straightforward mathematical calculation that the applicant's done and came up with, I believe it was actually 106, if I'm not mistaken, by through straight math. The other component, there's sort of a two-step stance here to the net residential determination. The other is uh, coming up with a density determination in which the applicant needs to then demonstrate a conceptual layout that demonstrates that the requisite number of proposed lots could be laid out in a standard layout. Again, the conservation subdivision design allows for smaller lots but requires 50% of the land to be maintained as open space. So the, as part of the net residential density, the applicant needs to demonstrate that they can get the requisite number of lots to meet the underlying zoning provisions, which in this case is 20,000 square feet. Um, and so one of my 
earlier notes, and I, I believe the applicant is, is, I know the applicant's prepared to address this, has to do with demonstrating that they can get 24 lots, again, 24 lots, uh, given the zoning compliance issue with the, with the tower. And they have pr provided staff with a, um, with a conceptual plan of that, and we've had opportunity to look at that and, and are fairly comfortable with it, and I'm sure they'll be demonstrating that to you as well. Um, a couple other comments that I'll just touch on. I know when the board last reviewed this, there was some uh, discussion about buffering along the backside of a number of the lots, at least three or four of the lots, I think it is, that about the hospice and the Sequoia Lane properties. Um, so hopefully the applicant's prepared to talk about what type of um, provisions they're, they're considering in that area. Um, it's the other, one other sort of threshold design element question uh, that was flagged was the public works director identified that the hammerhead that's proposed is on the wrong side of the road for the town's operation and maintenance. Uh, again, recognizing that the applicant's intent is to do the full build out, um, and it should make note, we know they're going through their full state permitting process for the full build out. Um, so uh, the public works director is comfortable, if the board is comfortable, granting the waiver provided that a note be put on the plan that the road <coughs> be maintained as private until such time as the road's expanded or the, becomes compliant. Um, so with all that, you will also have received comments from Jim Wendell, the town's engineer, and uh, from Wood and Kern, our peer reviewer, as well as uh, Bill Bray, our traffic peer review consultant. And so with that, Mr. Chair, I turn it back to you. Thank you. Mr. Frank. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Sean Frank. I'm an engineer with Sebago Technics. Uh, with me tonight is uh, Vinnie Mayetta of uh, Leighton Farm LLC. Uh, as Jay stated, uh, we were here at your last meeting uh, looking for preliminary for a 99 lot subdivision, uh, which is the, the one on the bottom. And, and like Vinnie and I have said, uh, you know, make no mistake, it's certainly our full intention to proceed with that plan uh, as early as possible. As Jay said, there was a threshold issue. Uh, there's an opportunity perhaps that the actual uh, uh, wording of the ordinance will be revised which would give us one avenue. Uh, there is another way we can actually rework the road if we have to to get around that tower, or the worst case scenario is the lease actually expires in 2018. So at the very worst case, you know, we are going to go forward uh, with this full project uh, as shown. As we did discuss, we had submitted previously to the Maine Department of Environmental Protection for a stormwater uh, for uh, wetland impacts and to the Maine DOT uh, for a traffic movement permit associated with the full build-out. And it seems those were so far along, if you will, and it only made sense. We're just going to uh, go ahead and finalize those permits, if you will, for the whole 99 lots. Uh, but as I discussed with you folks last time, what we are here for specifically is phase one, uh, which is 23 residential lots for sale and construction in a 24th lot, uh, which will be retained by the developer. And I will get clear on that, Jay, in terms of that it is the developer, because I'm sure we'll be buying the whole thing. Um, Vinny, as you may recall, there was a gentleman here last meeting, uh, just you know, wanted to have, and Vinny went out and met with him to discuss the trees along the property line. Uh, as we said, uh, you know, typically these lots are about 100 feet deep, you have a 15 foot setback, um, probably another 50 feet, if you will, to work the house in, some lawn, you know, decks and those types of things. Um, so our anticipation is probably about the back 25 feet, plus or minus, will be retained in its current state. Um, you know, we don't want to actually have a undisturbed buffer easement or something. Again, you know, as, as we stated, these are relatively uh, uh, smaller lots, and we're just trying to, to minimize the hindrance on them. I don't know if there's some type of note. I'll be happy to meet with Jay. But again, certainly our intent is to leave every tree that we can out there and certainly to provide and maintain uh, those trees all along the back property line. In terms of the hammerhead itself, uh, at the end of the day, once the road is extended, that hammerhead is actually going to be reconfigured into parking spaces uh, for the, the trail to allow access to the, to the, uh, to the trailhead. Um, so from our standpoint, rather than building a temporary 
hammerhead on the other side, which is actually closer to some of the uh, wetlands and the stream. It made more sense to put it on that side uh, and then just reconfigure that when we extend it. So uh, uh, we, we did see the note that, uh, that Jay had referenced, and uh, uh, certainly we have no issue associated with that. Um, we are just showing the specific open space so that we meet the definition, if you will, for a conservation subdivision design. As Jay stated, we did do a quick concept plan. Uh, we didn't spend an awful lot of time on it because, again, our first side of benefits is the thing that support 99 lots, but we certainly understood Jay's standpoint that, you know, we had to come up with a plan that showed 24, if you will, um, just to kind of uh, uh, allow us to go from a conventional subdivision to a conservation subdivision. Uh, we've gone through a... a Jay also noticed that there is a 100-foot stream setback. Uh, that actually, again, is working through the main department of environmental protection when you go through site location. Uh, they always ask, IF and W always ask for a 100-foot buffer, so that will actually be undisturbed. Um, I do have uh, Jay's notes in terms of the typical notes you folks like to see on the plans, and we will get those on there and certainly show some type of demarcation or markers, if you will, designating that 100-foot buffer. Um, all the other things that I've seen are, are, are relatively straightforward from our perspective. Uh, we have been working in terms of addressing uh, the final engineering review comments, uh, which again we saw was pretty straightforward. We'll meet with staff uh, over this week. Uh, again, our whole intent on this is obviously based upon uh, the ordinance language as it currently stands. Uh, we'd really like to get started out there, you know, this year in terms of from a construction standpoint. So. Uh, um, if it is uh, within the, the board's purview, we certainly would appreciate a preliminary approval uh, for phase one with the full understanding that we'll come back in for final almost immediately for that, and as soon as possible, we'll come in for the full build out. Uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I conclude my presentation, but certainly be happy to answer any questions you folks have. Thank you. Thank you. Dave, do you have anything? Uh, yeah, obviously, we, we've seen this before. It's the same as portion of the entire development that you presented before and you know, it looks good. Uh, but I was curious about the, uh, the trail. Uh, I, are those trails existing now or will they be created? The trails are existing now. The only part will be is we're obviously losing some of those trails that extend up into where the development is uh, and we'll be constructing a small portion if you will to get them from either the sidewalks uh, or the parking areas, so that you know there'll be a physical access, if you will, to the existing trail system. Uh, again, a large portion of this is uh, uh, within the resource protection associated with the Nunsuch River. Um, so the intent will be is to convey that that whole resource protection area, if you will, to the town of Scarborough. The town currently has a piece of property that abuts this, and of course, it's all along the Nunsuch River itself. So it'll actually provide you know a nice buffer to the river itself as well as uh, those recreational opportunities associated Ultimately, with the trails. who will maintain those trails? Yeah, we would anticipate to be the, the Town of Scarborough Recreation Department or whoever actually maintains them at this point. I mean, they're pretty low maintenance. I mean, right now, it's just like, I think it's just from people walking out through there. It just kind of keeps the... Exactly. It's exactly what it is. That's all I have. All right, thank you. Nick? I don't have anything really at this point. Okay, thank you. Susan? No, I have nothing. All right. Moving over here. John? Fine with it. Uh, the only problem with that hammerhead is it's temporary. We don't want to mind it when there's the left hand side that the town manages to deal with every day. Mm -hmm. Every winter. No problem with it. Right, thank you. Ron? Sean, where are you with the permits? Actually, we just saw them last week, and our anticipation is you know, I told them that. Our hope was that we were going to have, when we saw them last week, that I was going to have final approval for phase one uh, within four weeks, and was certainly hopeful that we would have our DEP permits for them at that time, and they said they would do their best, so. What about the uh, sanitary department in Portland Water? Uh, I have their letter of capacity, if you will. I have a, I will submit the same plan set to the Scarborough Sanitary District tomorrow and to the Portland Water District uh, at the same time. And again, that's for them to actually review the design, if you will, and for the Board of Trustees to actually accept the flows. But we do have uh, letters of capacity from both of those uh, agencies. Comment for staff. What's next in the process? <coughs> I mean, we're getting approval tonight for... No. But they're, being, they're asking for preliminary approval. Preliminary. It's Subdivision, as you may recall, is a two-step process of <coughs> preliminary and final. Um, if the Board's comfortable, certainly there are... Uh, sort of a host of 
I think has been uh, identified sort of more technical comments left. Um, and if the board's comfortable, certainly staff would be comfortable sort of dealing with those between preliminary and final um, at the board's discretion, of course. But um, their next step would be to sort of dress up the plan, so to speak, um, and then come back before the board when they've done that to staff satisfaction and have their um, DEP permits in hand. Um, looking for a final approval. I'm happy. Thanks. <coughs> I, uh, I yes. do have a question. May I take my arm off the back? I am okay. <laughs> yeah, I always <laughs> said that, Susan. You know that. No, I'm okay. <laughs> but I would like to just know where we stand <coughs> with the um, tower situation. How is that and when is that going to be resolved? Actually, let me take that back. I don't really even care when and how. What I care about is, is it going to be written down someplace? Are we going to just leave it hanging? Uh, you're losing me on the... Right, oh, right now it's an ordinance thing, okay, in terms of that we can't create a lot line, if you will, within 140 feet. The so town's actually, actually the going answer to the my question is that it's not, it'll be able to resolve it once the town resolves what it's going to do with Correct. the ordinance about cell towers. Assuming that goes through. Right. If that doesn't go through, <coughs> the worst case scenario is mm -hmm. uh, four years is when mm -hmm. the actual lease expires. Well, now. We hope it's not going to take four years. We well, to yes, to just resolve this yes, issue. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a touchy issue. Four years, I don't know. Okay, that's what I needed to know. Thank okay, you. and we'll hold, I mean, Thanks. again, I, it, it seems out of all the things the town has going on, our, our assumption is that the ordinance, at least hopefully that portion of it will go through, and if not, then we may have to. But I have also looked that we can get the road around the tower and still there meet the letter of the law. That's the kind of thing will. I'm looking for, because I think it's going to be a little messier than you might think. <laughs> well, yeah, I think there's the other part of it, though. But yeah. again, worst case scenario is four years, but again, if we have to, we can always redesign that road as okay. well. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with this at this point, too, for preliminary approval purposes. I uh, appreciate you working with staff on the conventional layout and the... Um, uh, we don't have the opportunity for a public comment on this one, but again, this is just a preliminary approval, so there will be other chances for discussion. Um, again, appreciate you working with staff on the conventional layout, going through that the exercise, as well as working through the open space and and uh, working with uh, the neighbors on the buffering. And um, it's good to have the clarification on the, the hammerhead so we don't lose any sleep over that. We seem to have had that issue come up a few times lately. Um, and uh, so with that, and again, this is just a preliminary approval. There are some, some still some uh, housekeeping and some technical details to work out, some permits to still come through. Um, so we don't need a big special motion for this. Um, but uh, I will move that we grant preliminary subdivision approval to Leighton Farm Subdivision Phase 1, Leighton Farm, LLC. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank, Thank you, you very much. We hope to see you soon. Mr. Chair, yeah. before Mr. Maeda leaves, I want to congratulate him on the new restaurant that uh, just opened. It looks really terrific. Item number nine, Griffin Road Senior Housing, Griffin Road Development, LLC, requests site plan and subdivision review for a 36-unit senior housing project at 5 Griffin Road. Jay. This is uh, yeah, another application the board has seen on a, a couple of occasions. Uh, first as a sketch plan, um, and then most recently it was before the board on June 2nd uh, to begin the sort of formal review application uh, process. Uh, the applicant has revised their plans based on board and staff comments and is back before you today. As, as we discussed last time, um, the, the property is in the TPC zoning, uh, which does allow for senior housing. The applicants are proposing 36 units of senior housing in one building with the uh, associated infrastructure improvements. The access to the site is off of Griffin Road, um, which intersects with Route 1. Um, you know, in the board's prior review, sort of the 
sort of threshold or, or key pathway review elements that the board had been concerned with was uh, buffering to neighbors, um, and, and I think the applicant has has uh, with working with the board worked on uh, some tree save area, uh, particularly to the neighbors with uh, about, uh, Pine Point Road and Orchard Street. I know the applicant has spoken with the two neighbors that are closest to them on at the end of Griffin Road, um, and I believe they've revised their plans in accordance with those discussions and ostensibly are in accordance with what the board would typically look for, and I think they've just sort of uh, dressed it up to the abutters' uh, liking, at least in, in accordance with the letter we received. Um, the other area of interest had been the intersection with Route 1, recognizing that that's a, you know, it's in the Dunstan Corner area, which is a tough intersection. Uh, the applicant has worked uh, with the owner of the uh, Dunstan Plaza, um, uh, Dunstan Plaza, where Griffin Road ostensibly today sort of acts as a uh, continuation or extension of the parking lot, but it is in, in actuality. It, they're right away, uh, 35 feet of land that uh, the property is owned by, um, I believe it's still owned by Mr. Tobias, though in the applicant's submission, they uh, I believe the applicant is under contract to purchase Griffin Road. Um, so they have worked um, to make improvements at that intersection um, and have worked with uh, the owner of the, the plaza to try to meet his needs as well. So. Um, at this point, you, you should have received uh, some staff comments um, where really the, the principal concerns, we have, as always, some detail type elements, but the uh, fire department had just wanted to see a little bit more detail with regards to the fire lane, particularly ensuring that there's all season access um, and the location of the dumpster pad. Um, We'll have also received comments from Woodard and Kern on the item, as well as from Goral Palmer doing the traffic peer review. Um, with that, I turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Jay. And I will turn it over to Ms. St. Clair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Nancy okay. St. Clair with St. Clair Associates. I'm here tonight on behalf of Griffin Road Development, LLC. We're here tonight to talk to you folks about Griffin Road Senior Housing. Uh, we've met with you on a number of occasions, and this project is certainly not new to many of you board members who uh, have seen it through the entire process. Uh, as Jay very uh, eloquently mentioned, we have been working with our neighbors uh, as part of this sort of last round uh, of minor revisions <coughs> and plan updates. Uh, the packet that you received on June 30th reflects our meetings with Mr. and Mrs. Tobias. We live on the northerly side uh, of the site. They're on what would be the easterly side of Griffin Road, so they're kind of on that corner. Their concerns were with regard to buffering and screening along their property line, our northerly property line. We had in our prior plan set to you, proposed a fence that was about six feet tall, and it was about 100 feet long. And we had proposed the landscaping that you do see along the edge of the property. We met with Mr. and Mrs. Tobias, sat in their yard area, and talked to them a little bit about the types of trees that were included in the landscaping, the grade changes that are across that area, in that their site is about four feet higher than where our parking spaces will be, so there's a bit of a slope uh, that goes down in that area. One of their concerns was with regard to the fence itself. They asked us to provide actually a shorter fence, both in height and length, and a more decorative fence. You'll see in the packet that we submitted to you on the 30th, the fence that they have selected. It's sort of an arched uh, fence uh, image in there. Uh, so you'll see that. So that is along the edge of the five parking spaces that are proposed in that area. The plantings did not change, but that fence did. and became more of a decorative, more residential scale uh, fence in that area. And that was something that uh, Mr. and Mrs. Tobias had requested. We also met. Um, with uh, Elena Frank and talked to her a little bit about her property and her concerns. She has been to a couple of the planning board meetings and voiced some concerns about pedestrian cut through in her property. What happens now is she has a garden that's on sort of the southerly side of her house and there's a fair amount of pedestrian traffic that cuts through that garden area. Jay's doing a great job of showing where that is. <laughs> so one of the things that they recommended was that they would like to have a post and rail fence. 
so that that would run along the property line, our northerly property, property line in that location, in order to prevent cross traffic, if you will, across their property, sort of protecting their garden area, but not necessarily providing any sort of visual screening. In addition, uh, there's a tree that's down on the end of Griffin Road that unfortunately there isn't a way to avoid having to lose that tree. And so what we propose to do is to actually place two new street trees uh, for them along their frontage. And you can see the placement on that plan uh, that's included there. Those two street trees actually flank a proposed driveway entrance uh, for them. They are looking perhaps in the future to build a garage on that side, and they'd like to have that um, be their driveway access. So we've provided as part of our landscape plan the trees. We've provided as part of our design for the sidewalk along Griffin Road tip downs that would handle a new driveway uh, in that location. So that's shown uh, in your packet as well. As we move further up Griffin Road at the entrance um, with Route 1, this has been a topic of conversation a fair amount uh, with you folks, with the peer reviewers, uh, as well as uh, the project team in general. And one of the things that was discussed was the uh, parking spaces on what would be the southerly, uh, westerly, excuse me, side of Griffin Road, right in that area there. That is part of Dunstan Plaza's land. Griffin Road runs up through that area, and uh, these are sort of that Griffin Road splits the two properties owned by Dunstan Plaza. But that is used for parking. It's striped at angled parking. It's striped uh, such that right now people who use that angled parking would have to back out into the quarter for Griffin Road. In addition, there is some parking right in the quarter of Griffin Road. So we came up with a program that would allow the owners of Dunstan Plaza to re retain their number of parking spaces that they have there. And that layout meets the ordinance dimensional requirements for stall size, drive aisle, et cetera. And the vehicles are in a more traditional bay layout, if you will, and so they park perpendicular. They do not have to back out uh, into Griffin Road. They can access and enter that area in a much more controlled pattern. If you note in uh, Tom Gorrell's peer review uh, of that plan, he does indicate that that does represent a, an improved design in that location there. We met with Dr. Penner, uh, presented that plan to him, and he's in general agreement with that, um, that that would be a layout that would work for him because he can maintain his parking spaces in that area. One of the other pieces of that was to plow and maintain um, the area for snow. And currently, that is sort of pushed across there. Uh, and Dr. Pennon was concerned with the prior configuration that we had, that that would be too constricting for that. So you'll note that we have uh, rumble strips, essentially, along the sidewalk crossing. We have it striped uh, in the area as the crosswalk. But it is a raised rumble strip, so that it could be plowed over. But it does provide delineation and identification of the Griffin Road corridor versus the parking area. In addition, on the opposite side, we do retain that raised island uh, in order to prevent that diagonal cross traffic that was a concern uh, and was discussed in that uh, layout, uh, in that, those prior discussions of that layout. So the plan integrates the last comments that you folks had made to us, as well as some updates working further with uh, the owners and the butters uh, to the property. We have received the staff and peer review comments uh, that were made most recently on our uh, submittal on June 30th. And uh, as part of those comments, there were a couple of things. One was with regard to snow storage. We had shown uh, an area of snow storage in four parking spaces within the site. Uh, from our standpoint, we don't anticipate that every tenant will have a car. That's not typical in this type of housing, but we do understand ordinance requirements would require that we not provide snow storage in those four parking spaces. So what we had looked at was providing parking off to what would be the southerly side of the garden area. And that does provide a sort of a, an open meadow area in the wintertime uh, that could be used for that snow storage. So we'd like to sort of supplement that by putting that snow in that area. Um, 
the other comment that we had was with regard to the fire department's concerns about snow uh, storage off the ends of the fire lane, and we would uh, put a note on the plan that indicates that that's not possible, that that is not a suitable area for snow storage, uh, so that it wouldn't get uh, in the way at the end of the fire lane, if you will. The other comment that they had was with regard to the dumpster and its loca location off the end. <coughs> If you look at the color rendering that we have over here, you'll see that at that end, it's a little bit different than what you see up on the screen. We have shown a dumpster location that's approximately 10 feet back and 10 feet off to the southerly side of the dumpster location. We've also fanned out the pavement a little bit in that area, which would allow us to have the fire lane be segregated from a sort of a, a turn, if you will, to put the dumpster uh, off there. It's about a 10-foot offset in both directions, but it would allow us to maintain access to the dumpster in that same general location, but it would keep the end of the fire lane clear. The, lane, the fire lane would curve just a bit, but that curve is no different than the curve that's in front of the building right now, uh, so geometrically it would meet the fire department standards as well. It's my understanding um, that you know, obviously the fire department will need to weigh in on that, and so we'd like to, with the board's permission, seek that as a condition of approval that we coordinate further through staff uh, to address some of these minor items. Uh, and we'd like to get your input and seek approval tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Nick, would you like to start on this one? The, uh, yeah, real quick, the dumpsters are for the residents to use, I imagine? That is correct. How far of a walk? I'm just, I'm just curious. This is what well, must do with actual technical things. I'm just curious. How far of a walk would that be? If you look at the notch in the building, yeah. there's an egress door right there. There's a sidewalk that comes out right in that location. So <coughs> someone would walk out that door and right up to the dumpster. And I would say it's probably maybe 30 feet. Okay. And the residents on the other side, did you consider maybe something on the other side of the housing? I'm, I'm just thinking elderly people hauling trash out would be yeah. quite a task. <laughs> <laughs> Seniors, please. Seniors. <laughs> um, I, I just for consideration purposes, maybe. But it, it has nothing to, to do with your plans, technically. Um, well, logistical. I, I don't see anything here that raises my eyebrows a great deal, so. Thank you. Thank you. Susan? I had a wonderful time last week. I got in the car and visited all these places. It was, it was really fun, places I hadn't been that I'd never been down Griffin Road. I didn't even know it was there. And I'm thinking they're going to look at what this car is doing because obviously I don't belong there. It was really quite eye-opening. I think this is going to be an incredibly nice addition to the neighborhood and the fact that you folks did with this proposal, what I would like to recommend all developers do with all the posts, proposals. You went to your neighbors. You chose to go to the neighbors first. And I just think that's totally brilliant. If you're going to have an issue about anything, it's kind of nice to know what it is up front, rather than going through all the work and then finding, oh my goodness, we've got an issue, and we've spent all this money and time. And I think it shows. So congratulations on the job well done. I really think is that we're going to see, the rest of us who are driving through that area, are going to see the biggest difference at the entrance to Route 1. That's going to, doesn't sound like much, but I think it's going to really make an impact, on, a visual impact on that particular little section of Route 1. And I think that that's all I have to say tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I, too, like the plan. Uh, you've done a nice job. Uh, I think it's going to be a nice looking building. And I don't see anything here that I have an issue with. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Ron? Yeah, I got a couple of things. Nancy, um, I listened to your presentation, but clarify for me. You're still going to come up with the, the appropriate amount of parking spaces despite the snow removal and plowing? That is correct. There will be no snow storage in any parking spaces. These 37 spaces that are shown on the site meet the ordinance requirements for this size facility. The only other thing is that one of the recommendations on here that I would put on uh, uh, our draft motion is the uh, sprinkler system. 
because the recommendation is that uh, they meet with the fire department as, uh, with final plans, and I would recommend that we put that on as one of the. In, is that permissible? Um, if if I might, one of, it's certainly permissible. It's your it's your motion. Um, but what I will reference and uh, what I should probably do a better job of giving the board a, a list of is we have some standard sort of post-approval items that get added to this list. And one of the items is a pre-construction meeting. Um, so typically what we have is a pre-construction meeting with the department heads, fire department, public works, planning, codes, so everyone's on board. Um, so I think as sort of that standard if, but it, certainly if the board would like to make that a condition of approval that they meet with the fire department and talk about sprinklers, no, I can draft you, something for you. But you, you, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll beg off. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, if I might, oh. might add on that particular item, we had a meeting last fall uh, which included the architect um, with the fire department to discuss their criteria for interior requirements, including the sprinkler system. So this isn't something new or foreign to us, we certainly understand, and we will circle back and follow up with them. As a matter of fact, the plans that you received were updated and revised based on some of those comments uh, that were received at that meeting. So we'll continue to keep that dialogue open and moving forward. Okay. And uh, we're sort of beating it to death at this point, but I do think it's one last important bit of information is that when the, when the uh, code and uh, fire inspector mentioned that comment, it was in the fact that they had an issue with another development who didn't come to them beforehand. So he said, hey, let's just make sure we're having these discussions because their cost estimates got driven up unexpectedly. And so want to make folks aware. Less a principal concern with this application, uh, but more of a general statement. Okay, but you did have a, an instance in which yes. the c communication right. didn't take place. And I just want to make yep. sure that it takes place, that's all. Yep. I'm all set. Thank you. John? I'm oh, good. I agree with the other board members. It's a great project. Uh, very great you know, to work with the neighborhood and downside of this to something that everybody can work with, agree with. Other than that, good. Good. Thank you. Uh, well, there really has been an extraordinary level of outreach to neighbors on this project. Um, you know, more than I think I've ever seen uh, in terms of not just meeting with neighbors but actually actively working with them and I think going above and beyond to really accommodate their concerns um, and so it wasn't just sort of paying lip, serv lip service to it and I think that does go a long way. I agree with Ms. Aguas on that. Um, the, uh, you know, there were some, some understandable, I think, valid concerns about the traffic situation and, and entering and exiting that site there, um, you know, as was discussed at the last meeting, and it's been discussed generally. You know, we certainly can't expect the latest project through the door to, to solve those pre-existing problems. I will say that I think that um, one, of the, one of the outcomes, hopefully, of all of this work with the neighbors and the improvements to Griffin Road will be that it will function more like a real road. Um, and I live not too far from there, and um, it was quite a while before I realized that there actually was a road there. Um, I, so I agree with Susan on that. I can, uh, I'm with Susan on that, that it's sort of, it's sort of a, kind of a no man's land there. So I think this has the potential to really make that a more kind of rational um, uh, intersection, hopefully. Um, and I think that under the circumstances, um, this really is the best possible outcome in terms of the design and the, and the programming for that site. Um, I know that a lot of people will be watching carefully to sort of see how it all unfolds, but I think that the, that the site plan that we've, we're ending up with and the design, <coughs> the unit count, and all those elements really are the best possible uh, outcome. So um, I, I, before I introduce a motion, I, I will note that on the snow storage issue, uh, one of the conditions does reference um, making sure that the final plan set reflects all the planning board comments and input and that would certainly, and staff input, and that would certainly include that. So for anyone else, else on the board who might be wondering about that, that will be included in there. Um, so uh, again, I'd like to thank the applicant for, for working with us on this. It's been a few iterations, but again, I think we're ending up with a, a, a good project. 
Thank you. Uh, with that, I will move that the Planning Board approve the application of Griffin Road Development, LLC, represented by St. Clair Associates under provisions of Chapter 405, the Zoning Ordinance, Chapter 405B, Site Plan Review Ordinance, and Chapter 406, the Subdivision Ordinance, with the following findings and conditions. Findings. Griffin Road Development, LLC, proposes to develop property identified on the Town of Scarborough tax maps as map U32, Lot 1. The site is approximately 3.24 acres with access off of Griffin Road. The property is located within the, within the TVC zoning district. The proposed development includes the construction of a 36-unit senior housing building and associated infrastructure improvements. The Planning Board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation and finds that the proposed design of the site plan adequately addresses the site plan review, subdivision and zoning ordinance requirements for site utilization and layout, access, internal vehicular movement, pedestrian ways, landscaping, stormwater management, architecture, signage, utilities, and storage. The conditions, number one, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the plans set shall be revised to address the items and staff comments. Number two, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall pay traffic impact fees. Number three, prior to the issuance of the building permit, the applicant shall execute and record the maintenance agreement as required by the post-construction stormwater infrastructure management ordinance. And number four, Prior to the release of the subdivision mylar for recording, the applicant shall provide a letter of authorization from the owner of the Dunstan Plaza, Inc. property, demonstrating the ability to perform the required work on that property. That is the motion. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Show that to be unanimous. Thank you very Thank much. You. Item number 10, Town and Country Center, Risbera Family Development, LLC, requests amended site plan review for phase two of the site at 32 Little Dolphin Drive. Jay. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> Let's see, as I believe nearly all board members will recall, um, this item received phase one approval in December of 2013. The project is um, went through uh, pretty much beginning about a year ago, uh, beginning with a master plan review process because uh, it is in the TVC zone and given the size of the building is required to go through the plan development review process. So they received a master plan for um, ostensibly a 40,000 square foot building with the general layout as depicted it, um, in the phase two full build out scenario, I guess I'll call it. Um, the board had, through the fall, begun, really ostensibly did a full review for the full build-out, both phases one and two. Um, however, sort of at the end of the review process in November, I believe it was, the applicant requested uh, the board um, only consider phase one, which is uh, up on the board before us and has received its approval and is well underway under construction. The applicant is now back before the board for phase two approval um, and their submission, submittal requirements uh, indicate that and um, you know, I think one of the benefits to going to our electronic files has enabled staff to provide the board sort of the, as the applicant referred to in their uh, submittal requirements, we're able to provide the board with all the past uh, iterations and the full build outs through phase one. Um, so. Uh, I think that just sort of indicates the benefits to the electronic filing that we've been going through for the last year and a half or two years. Um, so as mentioned, uh, the applicant is now before you for uh, phase two approval. Um, should note that they did receive uh, back during the phase one approval, they did get their DEP permit for the full build out. So um, they do have that in hand. Um, staff, you will have received staff comments. Um, from planning staff, Woodard and Kern, and Goral Palmer, uh, traffic peer reviewer. Um, you know, ostensibly much of the um, the conditions for for the proposed phase, the landscaping, lighting, pedestrian 
ways vehicular access um, um, staff has reviewed and as I mentioned provided comments in our memo. Um, um, it's, you know, I think a lot of those items um, were dealt with through that first round so I think you know normally in this size project you'll sort of see a host of staff comments um, but having the benefit of been through this process about eight months ago uh, I think a lot of those issues had been addressed but of course um, the board needs to consider those items moving forward. So with that, Mr. Chair, I turn it back to you. Thank you, and I will turn it over to the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Mrs. St. Clair with St. Clair Associates. And Susan's telling me I need to speak louder, so I apologize for that. Um, <coughs> uh, as Jay mentioned to you folks, we had been through the site inventory and analysis and master plan phase for this property. Uh, as part of our review of the project under the TVC zoning district requirements. Although the property itself wouldn't trigger that level of review, uh, because of the size of the building at full build out, we, were, uh, through, we did go through that process. It was on August 26, 2013, in which the board granted approval of that phase of the project, which contemplated the full build out. We're here tonight to present to you that second phase, that full build out that brings the project um, to its full completion. As Jay mentioned, back in the fall, we were pretty much all geared up to have approval of both phases uh, at a decision by the applicant, sort of at the end of the process, <coughs> we uh, requested that the project be phased. That phasing is what you see on the bottom there uh, on the rendering. That rendering shows the Phase 1 building, which is now standing and is well underway, and the Phase 1 site improvements, which include the parking uh, on the northerly side of the building. That also included the extension of Little Dolphin Drive and a partial construction of the access road, which was intended to form a link between Little Dolphin Drive and Foley Farm Road. That uh, Phase 1 was approved back in December of last year and construction began shortly thereafter. So the site improvements as far as the phase one parking are in place. The uh, stormwater system, the pipes underground and all that are in place already. And the extension of Little Dolphin Drive and the phase one portion of the access road have been built and paved. We have a sidewalk that is uh, under construction along Little Dolphin Drive, and there's a proposed sidewalk along Foley Farm Road in Phase 2. So for Phase 2, what you'll see is we have the addition of the second leg of the building. The buildings are the mirror image of each other, and they are connected by an atrium. The atrium is constructed as part of Phase 1 and is up and standing. So we have a Phase 2 building addition so that the, the building will be sort of a mirror of itself. And we are proposing to add 46 parking spaces as part of phase two, and those are on the lower corner, uh, as you see in the rendering. Those parking spaces are to supplement the existing spaces that are in phase one for a full build out uh, of the project. As I mentioned, this is something that the full build out is no different than what was presented and reviewed as part of the master plan and the review that happened with you folks throughout the fall. Uh, as Jay mentioned, we have our, our stormwater permit uh, for the project, which was designed to address full build out. And uh, we're here tonight to present to you these phase two plans, which would allow us to continue with construction to do some of the additional site improvements and to set us up to be able to build a building when the tenant needs to have uh, their space expanded. Uh, we're very excited about the project. The tenant is very excited about their new home, uh, and they're looking forward to having the opportunity to sort of have a seamless uh, move into phase two. So that phase two will provide a connection with the access road to Foley Farm Road. The sidewalk would be extended down Foley Farm Road and would connect to the existing sidewalk along Hannaford Drive. That was all uh, reviewed and discussed as part of uh, the master plan, if you will, uh, for that. As part of our package that we provided to you, we presented the plans that show the phase 
two improvements and sort of the master plan approach. We also have a traffic impact analysis that was conducted by Bill Bray. That analysis was actually uh, done this spring, and it integrates counts that were taken uh, within the last month or so at this point that integrate the existing and open and operational bank and coffee shop across on Route 1. So we have latest counts. We have uh, updated information that's included in Bill's uh, traffic analysis that is for the full build-out phase two uh, of the project. So some of the recommendations that are in, in uh, Bill Bray's uh, analysis were actually recommendations that were also included in phase one. For example, there are a couple of trees that Bill has recommended that be removed uh, on the site. Uh, those are gone. Uh, those were taken out as part of the phase one construction. There's some limbs that need to be, uh, vegetation that needs to be cleared up along Little Dolphin Drive. That has not yet been done, but that is a condition of phase one and will be done uh, as part of the ongoing construction. And so um, one of the other comments or uh, recommendations in Bill's study was turn lane, which is also included in the phase one improvements and has not yet been constructed, but it will be as part of the phase one ongoing construction efforts. There are a couple of items that are in the packet that are actually to address some construction field changes that we had need to, needed to make uh, as part of phase <coughs> one, and that includes if you look um, in the plan set, I don't think Jay has a memo, uh, it's a rendering up there, but there's a cross culvert that comes across Foley Farm Road that had to be adjusted in order to clear a utility service power line that goes underground and serves Wendy's. And so in doing that, there needed to be some adjustments there. So that's included as part of our phase two, but it's really a request for a modification under the phase one plan. So we've included that as part of our amended site plan package for you. Uh, so those are, in general, the changes that we have requested. Um, we've got the updated plans for you and would certainly entertain any questions you might have. Thank you. Uh, before we move on to board discussion, uh, we do have the opportunity for public comment on this item this evening, since it is the first time that this iteration of the proposal has been in front of us. Um, so as usual, I just ask that folks identify themselves, uh, limit their comments to no more than five minutes, and try not to repeat anything. So anyone who'd like to speak and come on up now. This may be, oh, Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm certain we'll probably hear about it, but you did receive a packet um, dated July 14th from Beryl Dana, as well as a letter from Main traffic resources dated July 14th, 2014. But I presume we'll hear more of the details shortly. Thank you. I presume so as well. And I, I will say that um, I believe the board received its copies of those at about 5:30 today. <laughs> so that falls well short of what we typically expect for things that were to be considered for uh, a planning board meeting. And um, my inclination is to. Uh, I really don't want to spend the board's time tonight digesting that in real time. Um, if someone from representing um, uh, Hannaford would like to speak, would be more than more than happy to listen. Um, what we may will need to discuss as a board how we want to handle this going forward. But I don't think it's a good use of the board's time under the circumstances to try and parse this when we have sort of just reviewed it. So. Again, we can talk about how we want to how we want to handle that. But uh, with that, I will open it up for public comment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Tyler Sterling. I work in the real estate department at Hannaford Brothers. Um, we are represented in this matter, as you mentioned, by Verrill Dana. Uh, Scott Anderson is our attorney. Um, he can't be here tonight, uh, so Gordon Smith is with us in his stead. Um, I previously addressed this board in the fall of 2013 when the project was originally proposed. Um, it was both phases at that point in time. And after conversations with, uh, multiple conversations with the Risbera brothers, the project was scaled back so as to not have any traffic impact on Foley Farm Road. And as a result of those changes, 
uh, Hannaford formally withdrew our uh, objections to the project as they were uh, no longer relevant with regard to traffic. Um, Wednesday of last week was when we were uh, made aware indirectly of the fact that phase two was uh, being reviewed tonight in front of the board. As a result, we engaged an attorney uh, once again, a traffic engineer once again, and an engineering consultant to review the submissions. Um, they worked most of the weekend, and we finalized the submission uh, this morning. So that's uh, that's why the submission hit your desk relatively late, and I apologize for that. I'm um, not entirely sure why we didn't receive a public notice. We're a tenant in that location. Uh, it's quite possible that the notice went to the landlord, and that was not provided to us. I, I'm not sure. I'm not here to make excuses. I apologize for the late notice, but um, it could not be avoided, unfortunately. So uh, I won't spend much time, and as I know the board hasn't had an opportunity to review it, but I will uh, just highlight our two main uh, issues that, that we've raised in the memo that's before you. Uh, first, uh, it still remains our position that the Risperra brothers do not have rights to use Foley Farm Road. Uh, under Hannaford's lease with Foley, we have a right, uh, a first option to purchase, rather. Um, and under the lease as the landlord, Foley granting us those rights therefore prohibits him from diminishing the property in the future. Uh, and so to this date, uh, or without our consent, and uh, Consent has been sought in the past for mortgages and other uh, and other changes, and it's been provided. But to date, uh, consent for this development has not been sought, nor has it been granted at this time. Uh, and secondly, we see three res unresolved issues with regard to traffic. Um, first, the the proposed development will diminish levels of service for some aspects of the intersection of Route One and Hannaford Drive to below a level of service D. As I'm sure the board is well aware, a level of service D is the standard within the ordinance, and therefore. Um, this project uh, cannot meet that requirement. Secondly, the queue length of traffic on Hannaford Drive will extend, the, uh, will extend, I'm sorry, exceed the distance from Route 1 to Foley Farm Road, diminishing the operation of that intersection. And thirdly, the, the traffic report still shows, uh, after build-out traffic, uh, leaving the credit union via Little Dolphin Drive. Uh, I don't think that's really uh, what will happen in reality. Uh, traffic leaving Little Dolphin Drive, as, as all the studies have supported, will certainly experience considerable delays, uh, undoubtedly resulting in a change of behavior, which will undoubtedly drive additional traffic down Hannaford Drive, Holy Farm Road, and Hannaford Drive, and that will uh, further burden Hannaford Drive beyond what's uh, impacted or forecasted by, by the traffic study. So in summary, we asked the board uh, to deny the application or condition the approval on restricting access uh, strictly to Little Dolphin Drive. In the alternate, uh, in the alternative, and without waiving any of our rights under the lease, should the board choose to approve Phase 2 over our objection, we request that the board uh, require the Risperra brothers to make appropriate modifications to the Route 1 and Hannaford Drive intersection so as to mitigate the impact, the adverse impact of the additional traffic. Um, mitigation can include, and can include, but doesn't necessarily need to be limited to an additional turn lane on Hannaford Drive to, apply, to allow for more capacity to mitigate those impacts. Um, that being said, no action should be taken by the board until those changes are shown in the plan and, and everyone on the board and uh, Hannaford has an opportunity to review those plans. So with that, that's my submission. I'm open to answer any questions, although since you haven't read it, I'm sure they will be limited, but um, thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, we'll close the public comment period. Um, for soliciting comment from other board members, I'll go a little bit out of our normal order, at least partially just to say that as a starting point that my inclination on this with regard to the legal issue um, would be to carry this forward to another meeting. We can certainly discuss other items that are in the proposal. Um, this is just my personal uh, personal uh, suggestion. Um, give ourselves until the next meeting and staff until the next meeting to hopefully provide some clarity around this threshold legal issue without there being any prejudice about how the board sees the merits of the proposal. Um, hopefully, presumably, that would not materially impact the applicant adversely. Uh, it would give everyone an opportunity to take a close look at this legal issue um, and, and hopefully 
be able to shed some light on that and look at it a little bit more clearly. Um, again, that, a lot of that's based on the fact that we just received this, and I, I don't think we can really spend our time tonight going through this in real time. Um, I have a question and so a comment. You may as well start us off, Ron. Okay. Hanna Hannaford Way, is that a town road? Hannaford Drive? Hannaford Drive. That is a public road. That is a public road. Okay. <clears throat> So uh, as far as the amount of traffic going down Hannaford Drive, that's not an issue because we can put as much traffic as we want down there. It's only an issue in that it needs to meet the town standards for level of service of activity and those sorts of things, which the applicant's engineer has provided their documentation on and our peer reviewer has looked at. Okay. So I have an issue that nobody else on the board is aware of because I'm on the Transportation Committee. And one of the things we're struggling with is the right-hand turn down at uh, the Walgreens. And one of the things we're working on, this is not cast in, a, in stone, is making Hannaford Drive more of a conduit up to Gorham Road because of the pedestrian situation down at, at, at the corner. So if on the transportation committee, if we decide to go in that direction, then that's going to skew the traffic flow through Hannaford Drive, regardless of this application. Okay? So, and I, as I said, this is just one option that we're dealing with, but it is an option. And, I, and that's going to have an impact on, on traffic flow if we go in that direction on Hannaford Drive to begin with. That's why I asked you the question. The comment I have is, is I agree with the chair. Uh, I agree that uh, you know getting this at the last minute is ridiculous. However, there is a legal issue here, and I don't want to waste our time going through and approving something until that legal issue gets resolved. And I agree with the chair that we can deal with some of the other issues that are pertinent to the planning board. But I don't, I'm not in any position to give a, a final vote until that gets resolved. And I'm no lawyer, and I don't want to be a lawyer. And uh, uh, so I agree with the chair that we should just proceed with those issues that we can talk about. But keep that other thing in mind that I just said. I will add, and, and staff can either confirm or, or clarify this. My understanding from, because this, this right trial and interest issue was raised in the fall, my recollection is that town, the town's attorney had looked at this and indicated that for the town's purposes and so including the board's purposes, that the applicant did pass that hurdle uh, in his eyes, it's sort of a maybe a little bit of a different threshold. Um, but that said, my feeling is that sort of out of an abundance of caution, there's no harm in taking a little more time to really look at that and take a fresh look at it and get uh, hopefully some more definitive feedback on that, just to pr protect our interest and the town's interest. Jay, did uh, you want to I'll speak to that? You, you, you touched on it correctly. Um, this was raised back in the fall. I think we received a letter October, I think, um, from from the Hannaford attorney sort of raising the same issue. And the town attorney did look at it and indicated that as far as the, you know, planning board requirements for right to interest, it is a much different threshold um, uh, with regards to just demonstrating evidence and that he was comfortable with that. There may be a private issue, um, but it, it was our town attorney's uh, uh, feeling that it was would be a private issue to be so resolved outside of this board's purview. Not to put you on the spot, which yeah. is what I'm trying to <laughs> prevent the board from being put, put on. Um, yeah. What would you, can you speculate or say right now what what new analysis could be done or, or what other steps could be taken to, uh, I don't to provide the board with, with more direction on this? I don't know. Um, I was trying to find this afternoon a letter or an email from our town attorney 
on the issue. I was unable to dig that up in the short time that I started looking for it. But I don't believe the analysis will come back any different because um, it is the same uh, issue. I mean, I had a little bit of time to look through the letter, not a great deal, but I, ostensibly it was the same sort of concerns that were expressed that I recall being expressed back in October. And um, so I would anticipate we'd get the same response from a town attorney, but ha not having a letter or an email in hand, um, that would be sort of the one sort of if the board's looking for something stronger than my recollection of what our town attorney had stated previously, that would be sort of the one element I could see that would be out there. But um, so okay, thank you. That. I certainly want to see that letter, and I want to see the explanation on what we can do and can't do, as mm -hmm. far as our guidelines. I want to see that from the town attorney, so I can look at it and see if I support a decision um, or anything. Except we're not lawyers. I might just suggest, and, and certainly talking about sort of the threshold questions is certainly pertinent and something we need to do, but as we work through those, I think it would, we also need to sort of at some point be sure we're circling back to those details mm -hmm. uh, uh, as far as um, the development pattern and, you know, the, the landscaping, lighting, and those sorts of things, if the board has any concerns with those, but we can come back to that. Absolutely. See a hand up down there. All right. Susan? Sometimes I wonder, um, here's another one where I wasn't here at the beginning, and it really is very confusing, very, 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 very confusing. I'm not surprised you couldn't find that letter in the 10 minutes you had from the time you got the packet until it was time to come to this meeting, but I think we do need to find it or get another copy from the, from the lawyer and have it in our packet. Assuming that what the lawyer said has not changed, my feeling about this whole topic is this is why we have traffic impact fees. Everybody pays a traffic impact fee. And this this item will also pay a pretty healthy impact fee. And if when things start happening, the impact the, the, the traffic is not moving properly, we've got money in the impact fee fund so that one applicant doesn't have to pay the whole amount. This is the joy of impact fees, you know? Some people I don't think quite get what they are, but they're just so that the last person in the door doesn't have to pay the full amount. And in addition to that, we've got the situation that we were just talked about, that maybe the town is going to get involved in doing things that are also going to affect this intersection. Well, we're certainly not going to ask the applicant to do nothing while the town decides what it's going to do. But ultimately, something is going to change there, and who's going to pay for it? Well, depending on what the town wants, it may pay for part of it. And the applicants will have to pay part of it as an impact fee. We don't know. But this isn't like there's going to be a big hole in the ground where nothing is available to help us take the step of putting in phase two of this, of this building. So I don't want to take up a whole lot of time talking about the ifs, ands, ors, or buts about traffic. I just don't. I think that we need to know precisely what the letter says so that we can be sure that we're on grounds that says, you know, basically as a board, this is what we need to do, and the private legal matters are not our matters. Other than that, I'd like us just to take a look at what it is we can deal with without getting involved in all of that. And maybe by the time we have our next meeting, staff will have a nice, neat, tidy little way for us to say, okay. Chair. Yes. Is this the uh, final approval or this would be a, essentially a, a final approval. It would be an amendment to the, the previous well, approval. Well, uh, there's Mr. Bray's here, I think. No. I think you should hear what he has to say about that. I'm, I won't vote tonight. Uh, and, uh, and, and I, I agree with what, what <coughs> Susan is saying. Well, Mr. Bray is kind of here. I guess what I would say, David, is if, if you have a specific question 
that you'd like to ask him, then, then I, I think that would be fine. But I, I don't think, as we're saying about ourselves and staff, I don't know that it would be fair to, to him to put him on the spot regarding a letter that was just released today and that he probably hasn't had a chance to digest either. I don't know if I'm misunderstanding what you're saying, but yeah. if you have, I, if you have asking, something specific, no, I, then... I'm not asking that he comment on, on someone else's letter. Okay. Just to uh, summarize but what his report says. I, I disagree. I think we should leave the whole topic of traffic until we have a chance to sit down as a board and really look at what it is that's being presented. Susan, it's not the traffic I'm worried about. It's the, the, the legal rights of, of that road. Exactly. It's the legal rights Let's of that road. I mean, if we vote on something and then the courts come oh, back I and agree. say that they don't have legal rights to that road, then we've wasted a lot of time voting for something. That, that That's what my concern is. I agree with you. Let's just wait. I, if I may, I, I've got a little bit of a different perspective on this. And let me let me start by saying um, I appreciate that um, the gentleman who spoke earlier offered us an apology. I, I do have to say quite bluntly that this is the third time information from Hannaford or and, and or Beryl Dana has been handed to us at a meeting. This is the third time. It's not the first time that this has been dropped on us before meeting. It's the third time. So when something like that happens, in my mind, wh why why does it happen? And, and I think this is exactly what you're seeing on this board. is It's, it's a tactic, um, is what it, it boils down to. And that, to me, is frustrating. That's It's, it's a misuse of our board's time. Um, it's, it's why we're here. We have an applicant that is, that is here and ready and is presented to us. I would... I would like to consider this on its merits and with, and if they're seeking final approval, put in a caveat to the extent of pending a, a review from the town attorney. If, if our findings were to say that we should issue approval. It's, it's different than what I'm hearing from the board now. But from what I've seen from the behavior on this, it's just, it seems to me like <laughs> it's, it's a delay tactic. And I hate to say it. But it, it, that's just what it appears to me. I mean, it's the third time. It's the third time, and now we're now we're sitting here talking about, you know, can we delay this longer? Can we delay? I mean, we've reviewed this plan several times, and, and I voiced my concerns previously about how many times we have reviewed this plan. Um, that's my perspective on this, anyways. Um, take it for what you will. I do have a technical question, though, if I may, um, and I think this is probably for staff. It, they're proposing that the that the the roads become public ways eventually. That the town would accept them as public ways. That's been part of the public discussion. Yes. Yeah. So when it comes to these bio retention cells, am I correct in saying that there are three that would actually be turned over to the town if the if the roads were accepted? Is that what I understood in this? <laughs> The bioretention cells, there are a few that collect runoff from the roads as well as from the site, and they do span the property line and, and the right-of-way line for the roads. Those bioretention cells, there is an agreement that the applicant will have as part of their maintenance requirements the maintenance of those bioretention cells, even though they're out in that right-of-way area. That's something that we worked with staff on early throughout the process, but the maintenance responsibility, the ongoing responsibility of those rest with the applicant. All right, so not, none of that would be turned over to the town. All right. Yeah. And just out of curiosity for future reference, does the town actually maintain, and does public works, or do we ever maintain these on occasion? Very rarely. And this is part of the discussion that we had on this, is the town has long not wanted any stormwater infrastructure within our right-of-way so it wouldn't become the town taxpayer's responsibility. It was to be the responsibility of the, of the developer of the project. What we're starting to see, um, however, there's sort of a, there's a, a shift in the way we're dealing with and perceiving stormwater. Long has been the concern of stormwater with the quantity of water and where it's going, you know, and 
there's much more of a shift to quality, and we're seeing more of these bioretention cells and tree boxes and sort of uh, low impact development is sort of the catch phraseology ways of dealing with stormwater. And so we're starting to see a little of this there's change. Um, and so in this project, this was, you know, as, as was just discussed, we had at least one, maybe two meetings with the town engineer, public works director, sort of grappling with this question. Ultimately, it boils down to the town council accepting these things being within the street. But as was just referenced, staff has suggested that, okay, with the right caveats, with the right uh, easements and legal documentation in place, staff could, with a straight face, go to council and say, you know what, in this case, it makes sense to have this type of uh, in infrastructure in our right away. We're confident that it will be maintained and it won't become the town's problem. Um, so I do believe these are things we're going to start seeing more often. I think a great case of this is something we talked about um, with, I think at your last meeting, talked about it with the two uh, subdivisions we just approved tonight, uh, Layton for preliminary and Rigney for um, uh, final. You know, we're starting to see more rain gardens or, or small stormwater swales on private properties, um, you know, and, and sort of how are those things going to be treated. So I do think there is this, this shift away from sort of the big pond, if you will, sort of standalone pond, everything's piped to it and you deal with it, to these more integrative processes. So um, that was sort of a long-winded answer. But typically, no, there aren't a whole host of them, but we are starting to it a bit more. All right, and w if, if it happens in the mm -hmm. future, are, how, how is the town absorbing the cost of maintaining those? What, what is there, was, is there, as a, in this case, this won't be, this won't I know fall it, to the town. In this case, it doesn't, but just, I'm sorry to yep. take up the moment here, but nope. in general, how would it typically be structured? Are there other fees that are getting imposed on something like this? These are questions that need to be worked through. I think, um, mm -hmm. I think there's going to be, in the coming, in the coming months, years, I think at some point we'll be grappling with a stormwater management ordinance that's much more in, um, detailed than what we have currently. Uh, so, yeah, there's there's a host of ways the town could deal with it uh, by saying no, thank you, <laughs> we're not going to take them. By saying we'll take them and we'll just pay for it, or fees, or it's a range of ways. But as of right now, we don't have a set pathway, and in this and so back to really the one example we have at this point, it's wholly on the applicant and that will be Thanks. recorded. <laughs> Just one, one thing to add to that. Um, we believe that one of the appropriate mechanisms for that is in the post-construction stormwater ordinance where there are legal documents and agreements that set forth who has what responsibility for the various components of the drainage system within the street, outside of the street, that may pick up runoff from the street system, and that's something that's entered into between the applicant and the town and is reported at the Registry of Deeds. So there is an, I believe there's an avenue to appropriately define that as to whose responsibility it would be, and there are obviously certain uh, repercussions for following, not following those requirements. So. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's all I have. Susan, do you have something else? Yeah. yeah. When we first started this, I was unaware that this was re going to be a request for final uh, subdivision approval. And um, the more longer I've sat here and listening, the more I'm in agreement that unless there's something that has changed from the initial approach, which was for the entire package, not phase one and phase two, that we should go ahead with the idea that we have to make sure that there is a, what's the word I'm looking for, not waiver, but caveat, mm -hmm. caveat, caveat, whatever you call it, that we get the uh, ruling from the town lawyer on the legality of all of this. And until we get that, nothing happens. Other than that, I don't really have any problems with what it is that's happening here. I do understand that there may be traffic impacts, but I think that m my little tri dyad there about, you know, there are ways that it can be handled. We're not going to, we're not going to resolve the problems on what is or isn't going to happen at these intersections here tonight. 
Uh, just to clarify, my, I guess my sentiment overall was the caveat would be the statement from the town attorney saying he has reviewed it and that the applicants have exceeded the threshold for ownership, so quote unquote ownership of this or property rights related to this property right. That's all, that's, that would be my two cents. Well, and I think that in that scenario, with that sort of approach, and I'm sort of thinking out loud like I guess we all are, um, it would be the, the, it would, the implicit, the other implicit piece of that would be the applicant sort of acknowledging that, and, and everyone involved acknowledging that to the extent that there still may be a private legal issue there, that any action by the board doesn't necessarily end that. And that, that's a point that you made, Susan, earlier. I think that there's a, uh, there's sort of a difference between what the board, what level of assurance or confidence the board needs in order to act and whether there still is potentially some private legal dispute, if you will, going forward, which is sort of beyond our purview. And, you know, one of the things we, we try to avoid, although we're sometimes referred to as a quasi-judicial board, um, is give, being put in the position of kind of judge and jury on things that we really are not experts on. Um, so I guess I could be amenable to something like that. I, again, continuing to think out loud as a possible alternative to a condition um, would be um, setting it up as sort of a, a consent item for the consent next item. meeting. Uh, we've done that before on other projects with different sorts of issues when, when it's sort of generally agreed among the board that um, we're generally comfortable with, with where we are on the merits and that there may be one or two loose ends to tie up that don't rise to a level of, you know, we have certain things like the EP permits where we sort of have drawn the line as Rocky knows well. Um, but that would be another potential uh, approach and I just I guess I get a little bit, I could, I could be convinced, but I get a little bit uneasy about having a condition that is so I like that. I weighty, like that a lot. if you will. It's a, little, yeah. it's a little heftier than what we would typically have as a condition to, a, to an approval. Plus, well, we wouldn't have to come up with, I'm sorry. Could I weigh in on that? Yes, you may. Thank you. He's being very sweet to you. Um, I would like the board to consider voting to approve our project tonight. Uh, and if you feel that you need to have a condition of approval, um, I, I could live with that. I feel we more than definitely have met the town's requirement for meeting the threshold of right title and interest in that property. Um, Hannaford knows we have. They dispute it. They don't agree. We agree we don't agree. Um, I think it's, it's, gonna, it, it's, a, it's a private matter. It's a legal matter that we're going to have to settle with Hannaford, it's not up to the board. Um, I think you're going to find that, you know, if, we, if I had my file tonight, I could show you the show you the information from the town's attorney that said we've met. We've, we've had conversations about this, that we have met right title and interest. So we'd like the board to approve it with a condition of approval so we can get the clock ticking mm -hmm. because the Rosbera boys are being harmed by waiting. We're under construction. We have work that we could move forward and do in a timely manner or we have to wait another month to come back to the planning board. That's just another month on the other end that, that it's going to take. And our differences with Hannaford, we're going to have to settle those. We're big boys. They're big boys. We understand that. Um, if we've met all of your criteria, we'd like to have you approve our project. Um, if you'd like to have us talk a little bit more about traffic, Bill Bray's here, and uh, he can certainly do that. Um, we want to move this forward sooner than later. And I know all the traffic numbers talk about uh, the project being completed in, in uh, 19. It can happen a lot sooner than that if we can get this moving and get it settled. So uh, we would like the board to consider moving forward, give us an approval, and make it a condition of approval that uh, the town's attorney has to agree that we do have right title and interest, if you'd like. I would like to not see it as a consent item because that, that just puts us out another month. So if you would consider that, I'd appreciate it. Jay, to put you on the spot again, is yep. there something you can you could craft that yeah well I I mean the thing that. The, the, the issue with right title interest is a threshold it threshold issue 
So if the board has any questions or concerns, I would suggest it, and I you know, have to apologize to, to uh, Mr. Isbear, because I'm going to I don't believe it's in the town's best interest for the board to make a threshold question a condition of approval. I would suggest one of two things. Staff is relatively comfortable that they've met right title or interest, um, so it's really up to the board. If, if you are concerned, then I suggest you wait, you put the item on. For, well, first we need to talk about the other details, be sure it is ready for consent. <laughs> I think we, um, but I would really offer those two pathways forward, either uh, approval and with standard conditions to getting the right to, not to getting the right to interest, but <laughs> considering that issue resolved, and we could certainly write a, that into the findings if the board was comfortable with that, um, or a consent item. If the board would like me to draft something for a condition of approval, I certainly act at your request and could do that as well. Um, but I would sort of offer A or B as the two pathways forward staff would think would be the most effective. Okay. Can I ask a quick question of staff, if you don't mind, Mr. Sure. Chair? Um, <clears throat> typically, um, applicants can't come to us unless they've shown title and interest, correct? Or right? Is, is that, that is a threshold question. Um, you know, Typically, uh, the planning board, you know, we, we have easements, we have deeds, so as I said, yeah, if, if there, yes, that is a, that is a, a threshold mm -hmm. application question. You've so. approved phase one, uh, assuming that staff has approved the threshold, and now phase two is coming to us, and now we're taking up threshold again. Well, phase one, the difference being, just the difference being phase Use one didn't impact Foley Farm Road. I agree. That, that, was, that, was the, that was the difference there. So again, you know, uh, you know uh, staff stands ready to support the board moving this item, again, presuming all the other details are satisfactory and presuming that the right to interest issue has been dealt with. Um, we have their deeds here. There's documents from, uh, from uh, the Foley's. There's documents from Little Dolphin Drive. Um, if so I might point out, nothing's changed since October of last year yeah. when we were dealing with this. Except that, as, as we just said, that phase one, you eliminated for the time being uh, the Foley Drive. And, and the, the difference now is not in the plans, but bringing Foley Drive into the picture. So, uh, you know, I want that clarified. Yes, but the, but the sure, ruling sir. from the legal counsel was based on the full build out. Full build out. So I'm back again saying, let's just do it. But, but they. And, but they came back and asked us to revise. Yeah, that. I know. And now they're and now we're getting information, you know, two minutes before the meeting to make it difficult to do it again. Based on the same information it was based on before. Nothing has changed. It's the same exact situation. We have, you know. With the help of staff, I'd make the motion to uh, grant final approval. With, uh, yeah, I. Um, this is one of those, it seems like we've had an inordinate number of these, and they've gone sort of both ways for, for this particular applicant. Um, and so I think he knows that this board always tries to work with applicants, and we are sensitive to time considerations. Um, and I share the frustration about the timing of receiving this information. I know I'm involved with development in my private life and I would certainly expect my attorney to be actively affirmatively monitoring town agendas if there was a, an issue that directly impacted my interests and so to, to sort of expect someone to come to them um, and seek them out you know I, we've said this in other cases where people have spoken out and said how come I wasn't notified um, that's something that people have to take some responsibility for. So I want to make that clear that I'm, I'm, I am not pleased being put in this position. Uh, that said, when it comes down to it, I have to agree with Mr. Chase that to put a threshold item as an, in as a condition to an approval, I'm, I'm just not comfortable with. 
Um, you know, I'm only acting chair tonight. I'm only one board member. And Mr. McGee, if you or anyone else wanted to put a motion forward and and craft the condition with staff's help, you're more than uh, welcome to. But my preference would be to uh, make sure that we're that we're okay as a board on the merits and set this up as a consent item. So I would just have to respectfully disagree with you and Ms. Oglis on that. Um, I think we're all kind of coming from the same place and trying to get to this to a to a, an appropriate outcome, but it's just a little bit of a, a quandary. And I again I don't like being put in this position, but in my mind that's uh, that's where we are. So that's uh, that's where I'll that's where I'll leave it. Chairman. Yes. Uh, the applicants have provided uh, title. Uh, it is in dispute. Uh, the town attorney has concurred that <coughs> they have title. Uh, it's not for us to act as a court of law, try to decide or determine who has title uh, as far as. As far as the town attorney is concerned, uh, it passes, it passes muster, so to speak. Uh, so our our duty is to <coughs> is to examine the uh, proposal and decide if the proposal meets uh, all of the requirements for approval. Uh, I agree with my <coughs> fellow members over here who uh, who. I think that we should go ahead with this. Uh, and the question, uh, if we put this off for another three weeks or whatever, what if we get another mm -hmm. another letter at the last minute before that? Can we keep putting it off? It's going to stop somewhere. Huh? I've seen this in the MMA manual and I've seen our town code for us the same way. Without getting into the whole legal part of it, on which case it is, basically the end of this says, nor may the board refuse to act upon or deny approval for permit because of existing pending lawsuit by the applicant for related issues. But it's really not any legal issues above us. We can't deny this because of a pending lease. Yeah, I, I agree with those are those are valid points that are well taken. And again, if someone wants to put that motion forward, they certainly may. I guess the only thing I would add in response to those comments is that um, we don't have that letter in front of us, for better or worse, where everyone is sort of acting on the basis of recollection, unfortunately. Um, and the applicant did did withdraw the second phase in the fall because there was this issue. So to me, that indicates that there was an understanding that there was an issue. And so while the facts, the material facts may not have changed, the law may not have changed, and I agree we can't act as uh, a court of law, uh, to me, that just says that we need to have one more look at it. That's not saying that it should be open-ended, or that we set the stage to have something else be handed to us at 6:59 before the next meeting. Um, you know, I, I, uh, this is a really tough one, and I could see people going either way on it, and I appear to be outnumbered on it. I think we just honestly disagree on how to act. But again, if someone wants to put a motion forward, by all means, do so. I'll make the motion. <coughs> Make the motion for final approval um, based on uh, findings of fact and the conditions set forth as presented to me here tonight. Very quick. By Mr. Chase. Second. So now we just vote on that motion. We, we have any discussion? No, I have a, uh, something about to change on the conditions of approval. It, uh, it says the revised plans may be reviewed and approved by planning staff. I, used, I would use the word where, must. Where, where are you on On that? the last page on conditions of approval. Yeah, which one? 
the oh, okay. first paragraph, the last sentence, the revised plans may be reviewed and approved by mm. planning staff. I think the word should be must be approved. Right. You have to put that in an amendment. Ron, you want to make an amendment? Amendment. Yeah. I make that as an amendment, yeah. Second it. Who calls for the vote? Chair. Chair? Is there, uh, it, I'm sorry, is that a discussion point? Well, we have, there is a seconded motion on the table. And uh, is there any well, there's, further discussion? There's my uh, amendment, too. An amended, second. there's an amended, seconded okay. motion on the table. And it, is there any other discussion? Is the board interested in adding language to the draft findings? regarding right title or interest, or are you comfortable with the way things stand as they typically do as it's indicated in the record? I, I have it's language either way, which if you're comfortable with the record standing as it yep. always does, then that's fine by staff. I'm comfortable. Okay. okay. Any further discussion? All in favor of that motion? Yes, yes. Yes. Vote on the amendment. Which, which the amendment. Okay. Are we voting on the amendment or on the? No, on the amendment. Voting on the amendment. Okay. We've got a Roberts Rules holder is here. Yes. Okay. Did you get a count? All right. Did you get a count? I did not get a count. Okay. Did we? Is there, this is a vote on the amendment. Amendment. Yeah. Okay. Two, um, four. 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 Okay. Four to zero. Four. Stay. One. One of stay. I'm not, I'm not voting. I'm not. Oh, I'm not a voting did member. The, did the chair, chair vote? Chair. Chair did not vote because he's not. I'm opposed. He's opposed to this. Okay, so. four to one. Yes. Now you can vote on the. Yeah. Now we'll vote on the motion. All in favor. Uh, he entered it as draft. As draft divided. Right. Ron. On. Hey. I know. Okay, I'm still. I'll vote five. Right. So again, four to one. All right. Thank you. Motion Thank passes. You. We appreciate it. Thank you. Item number eleven on the agenda. Is there a town planner's report? There is. I'll just make note. I do have copies of the motion that folks can, if they're interested, they can take. I'll put them right there. Uh, but the, uh, let's see. Sorry. <clears throat> A town planner's report? Uh, actually, no, I do not have anything to report. <laughs> <laughs> just that sort of a report. Is there an administrative amendment report? Uh, yes, do have one item to report. Worked with the uh, chairman on an administrative amendment to the El Rayo restaurant. Um, there's some modifications to the building from what was previously approved. Um, there was some, some good rationale for why the changes were there, and so I'd be happy to provide board members with a copy of the record on that if you're interested. Um, but I do know they are up and running. Um, that is what I have. Thank you. And it looks good. I have not been in yet, but it really, from the outside looking in, they did a good job on the building. Mm -hmm. Is it good? Any planning board correspondence aside from our late breaking legal correspondence? Uh, you should have received an email we, uh, staff was asked to forward to you from a Joan Jagalinter. It was a comment on um, the. Um, Senior housing project on Black Point Road, the formerly, Wegman project, the formerly right. known as Wegman. I think the new name is going to be Emeritus. Emeritus of Scarborough. I Correct. Think it is. Um, so you should have received that email with her comments. Uh, I believe there's also an email regarding the uh, the cell tower proposal. I think that um, went to that Long Rangers. That might have been lumped in with something okay. else, but it found, it found its way in my packet. Okay. So. Well, Very good. The towers. We didn't get a new one on the towers. No. no I'll, I'll yeah, we just, had one comment. I guess going back to town planner's report, I, since it came up, I believe the um, couple of things. Uh, public hearing at town council on Wednesday is going to be the uh, Gorham Road rezoning we just talked about tonight. And I also believe the um, 
the transmission tower language is also on there, among other items that, of course, the council deals with. But those are two items that have recently come before this board that will be a public hearing, I believe, on both of those, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. Thank you. Yep. Any planning board comments? Yes, Ron, you already kind of spilled the beans on. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's in discussion purposes. Yes. But I didn't want it to go by without the board at least hearing the fact that, that it is one proposal that we're working on. Whether it's the final proposal or not, I have no idea. But at least I wanted the board to be aware that we're working on that. That, that corner is a tough one, as everybody knows, and that one proposal is to channel some of the direction down Hannaford Drive. Right. Sure. And, and that's good to have that context. That. I'm glad you brought it up. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. I'll make a motion that I think we'll be unanimous on. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you're right. Move to adjourn. Second. Carol's got her Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? I show that to be unanimous. Thank you very much.